All right, guys, this is what IS41 deals with. IS41 tells you how to measure your cows and goats and hens and barts and sheep and trees. It also tells you how to measure your milk and eggs and fruit and oats and leaves and ooze and veggies. So accountants, after watching this video, you will completely understand how to measure all those items. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about some of the key definitions. First off, we need to know what is agricultural activity. Agricultural activity is the management of biological transformation such as biological growth of a biological asset may be for the purpose of sale of that particular asset. Or, agricultural activity can be management of biological transformation of a biological asset for the purpose of creating additional biological assets. Or, agricultural activity can be the management of biological transformation of a biological asset for the purpose of harvesting agricultural produce from that asset. So, agricultural activity is the management of biological transformation of a biological asset for the purpose of sale, for the purpose of creating additional assets, for the purpose of harvesting agricultural produce from that asset. Now, you may ask that what is a biological asset? Glad that you asked. Biological assets are living plants and animals. It will include all kind of animals like sheep and donkeys and cows and goats. It includes trees and plants and fishes and chickens and birds and other living things. Now there you need to understand sometimes trees are physically attached to a particular piece of land you need to know that the tree is a biological asset and the land is not a biological asset. The next thing that you need to understand is what is an agricultural produce. An agricultural produce is the harvested produce from a biological asset, such as milk, meat, eggs, etc. And what is a harvest? Harvest is the process of detachment of produce from a biological asset or the end of the biological asset's life. You take out milk from this cow, that process is harvest. Right, all right, we will do that later. Biological transformation. We can have growth, degeneration, reproduction, procreation, and production. These biological transformations create qualitative or quantitative changes in a biological asset. Now guys, let's talk about the classes of biological assets. Under biological assets, we have animals. Oh yeah. Then we have plant. We have consumables that are to be harvested as agricultural produce or sold as biological assets. Then we have bearer. Here, entity doesn't wish to harvest the biological asset. Rather, entity wishes to harvest agricultural produce out of this biological asset. Means, company is not going to end the life of this cow and company is not going to take the meat of this cow, skin of this cow. Rather, company will take milk out of this biological asset. And then this biological asset can be considered as a bearer biological asset. You never saw the milking process. Milk it until you can milk no more. What? Milk it until you can milk no more. All right, all right, we will do that later. Next, we have mature biological asset. There are two different categories of biological assets, consumable and bearer. For consumable, biological asset is mature if it has attained harvestable specification. Means you can now cut down this tree. For bearer type biological asset, it is mature if the biological asset is capable of sustaining regular harvest. Means this tree is capable of producing fruit every single season. 
then this tree will be considered as a mature tree and immature biological assets, of course. Well, how to recognize biological asset? We have three conditions and all of those three conditions must be fulfilled before you can recognize biological asset. Number one condition, entity controls the asset as a result of past event. Say, you have purchased the cow and so you can now control the cow. The cow has given birth to a baby calf. You control the cow means you now control the baby calf. So the condition one is fulfilled. Our next condition, there is probable future inflow of economic benefit. Means maybe you can sell this cow, you can consume this cow, or you can be an agricultural produce using this cow. And number three, the fair value or cost of the asset is reliably measurable. If you cannot reliably measure a cost or fair value, how can you recognize it? You need to show a value. You cannot do that if you cannot measure it. Now let's talk about how to measure biological asset. Biological assets are measured at fair value less cost to sales. Means you need to obtain market price. That is fair value. Go to the market and check the price and also if you want to sell this biological asset, maybe there is some transportation cost. You need to take the asset to the market and also you need to pay some commission. Deduct those carriage out and commission from the market price and you get fair value less cost to sales. And any gain or loss on initial recognition is presented in profit or loss. Similarly, any gain or loss from changes in fair value less cost to sales subsequently will be presented in profit or loss. You may have thousands of cows or biological assets. In order to measure fair value, you do not need to check market price for individual biological asset. What you can do is you can group your biological assets based on their attributes. And for the whole group of biological assets, say for 1000 cows, you can measure the fair value on an average. That makes things very simple. And sometimes we can also consider that the cost of the biological asset is the fair value if after purchasing the biological asset there is little or no biological transformation of that biological asset. You have just purchased a cow for $1,000. That $1,000 can be considered as the fair value of that cow because you have just purchased it and there is no biological transformation. The problem is, if you cannot measure fair value, then what you are going to do? Well, Ars 41 says, in that case, this biological asset should be measured at cost less accumulated depreciation, less accumulated impairment model. Very much similar to IL-16 cost model. But do not revalue this biological asset. If fair value subsequently is reliably measurable, then you must measure this biological asset from that point at fair value less cost to sell. You guys need to understand that for immature biological asset, you should not charge depreciation. So wait till the asset becomes mature. After that, start charging depreciation. Under here, OIS 41 has a presumption that the fair value of biological asset is reliably measurable. And this presumption can be rebutted only on the initial recognition for a biological asset, for which quoted market prices are not available and for which alternative fair value measurements are not reliable at all. Once the fair value of such biological asset becomes reliably measurable, you must start measuring this biological asset at fair value less cost to sales. Do not measure this biological asset at cost less accumulated depreciation and impairment anymore because you know the fair value. Alright guys, here is a pop quiz for you. Let's check it out whether you can answer it. Rhina purchased a cow for $1,000 today and Rhina paid $20 carriage in cost. 
Raina estimates that if she wishes to sell the car, then she will have to pay another $20 carriage out and also $30 commission. How the car should be measured initially? Now, first answer that you need to make over here is whether $20 carriage in should be capitalized as part of the value of the cow or it should be expensed. Well, what does our IS-41 say? IS-41 says that biological assets should be measured at fair value less cost to sales. That's why you cannot capitalize this $20 carriage in. This $20 carriage in should be expensed. Now the second question that is asked over here is what should be the car's value? Well, the value is fair value less cost to sell. The cost $1,000 is considered to be the fair value. So let's take $1,000 over here. Less cost to sell. You have $20 carriage out and another $30 says commission. So net amount is going to be $950. The next question is gain or loss on initial recognition. Look at these guys. This asset is purchased for $1,000, but you can recognize only $950. That makes you to recognize $50 loss on initial recognition. In addition to this $50 loss, you have already recorded $20 carriage in as an expense. Now the second question for you. Rhino's cow has given birth to a baby calf today. Estimated fair value of the baby calf is $100. In order to sell the calf, Rhino will have to pay $20 carriage out and $30 sales commission. How the calf is measured initially? Once again, the calf is measured at fair value less cost to sell. You can sell the calf for $100, so take $100 first, and then there are costs to sell. Carriage out, you need to take it to the market, and you need to pay sales commission. So, the net figure is going to be $50. Is there any gain or loss on initial recognition? Oh yeah, you are recognizing an asset at $50, but you didn't have any cost. Your cow literally gave birth to this calf. So it came at zero cost. So you are going to recognize $50 as your gain on initial recognition. Hope you have understood that far. So we have talked about agricultural produce a lot. Now let's check how to measure agricultural produce. Well, at the point of harvest, agricultural produce is measured at fair value less cost to a sell. And any gain or loss on initial recognition is presented in POL as like biological asset. Remember, fair value less cost to a sell. Well, and after initial measurement, this agricultural produce will be transferred to inventory and then IS-2 principles will be applied. And IS-2 also requires inventory to have a cost, so the fair value less cost to sell of the agricultural produce should be considered as deemed cost of that inventory. Alright guys, let's talk about Bureau plant. A builder plant is a living plant that is used for the production of agricultural produce and we are expecting that this builder plant is going to give us produce for more than one year and we do not have any intention to cut down this tree, harvest the plant as agricultural produce. That's a builder plant. And when bearer plant basically becomes older and no longer used to beer produce, maybe we will cut it down, maybe we will sell it, but that doesn't preclude this plant to become a bearer plant. Now you know what is a bearer plant. Now a bearer plant may have some fruits growing on that tree, like mangoes on a mango tree. Those mangoes will be considered as biological assets, so you should measure those mangoes separate from the measurement of bearer plant, of course. 
Certain things are not beautiful plants, guys. What are those? Number one, plants cultivated to be harvested as agricultural produces. Then number two, plants that are cultivated for agricultural produce, but maybe you also have the intention to sell it or cut it. Then it will not be a beautiful plant. Then your annual crops like petty is not a beautiful plant. Chilies and onions and garlic are not beautiful plants. Next. How do you measure beer plant? You need to apply R16 principles to measure beer plant as like PPE. Yes, as like PPE. A beer plant is measured at cost on initial recognition. Then this cost-based measurement will continue till the asset becomes matured. Once the asset become mature, then we are going to charge depreciation based on the estimated useful life of that asset. And also we need to carry out impairment test if there is any indication of impairment loss. Under I-16, there are two measurement models, cost model and fair value model. You can use any of those two models, no problem at all. Well, for biological asset, you may receive sometimes government grant and government assistance. Normally, IS-20 is applicable for government grants and disclosures of government assistance. Well, however, for biological asset, if you receive a government grant, which is conditional also and where you need to repay that government grant to the government if condition is not fulfilled, then IS-41 says you cannot recognize that government grant as income unless or until you fulfill the condition that means it is not repayable to the government anymore at that point you can recognize this government grant as income in your statement of profit or loss if the asset is measured at fair value less cost to sell here is a pop quiz for you guys let's take a look the grant requires an entity to farm in a particular location for five years and require the entity to return all of the grant if it forms for a period shorter than five years. Can entity recognize government grant as income in this case? Well, the answer is no, because there is a condition you need to return the grant to the government if condition is not fulfilled. However, if the terms of the government grant allow part of it to be retained according to the time that has been elapsed, the entity can recognize that part of the government grant that is not refundable to government back as income over the period of time. Next, presentation and classification. Well guys, we are going to present our biological assets separately from other assets. And if material, we are going to subclassify our biological asset as animals, plants, beer, consumable, mature, immature, etc. Agricultural produce, you know already, it is shown in inventory. So guys, I hope this video was helpful for you and you have learned something new today. If it was helpful for you, maybe you will consider sharing this video with your friends so that they can also learn something new. If you have any question or opinion or if you want me to publish one specific video, please let me know in the comment below.